Now that you've completed the onboarding process, you've downloaded the Chrome extension and the Figma plugin, you already start using design. If you already have a Figma file ready, you can jump right into it. If not, or you want to test out the one that we found, you can head over to the UI kits tab in our dashboard. I'll place you on this page, which is a curated list of Figma UI kits that we believe work really well with design. And the best part is all of these UI kits are free. Now, some of them may have a premium or a paid version of them, but the ones that we've linked here are the free or complete versions. And you could click on any one of them, open them up, find a design that you like and convert it to bubble. So let's get started. We'll click on this one right here. It's one of my favorites, Design with Shad and Dash UI. I've linked two versions. They're both very similar, but I think this one here has a couple more components. So we'll go through that one. This will take me to the Figma page and I'll click open in Figma. And the one thing to note here is if you're presented with a selection for an account, always pick the one that says editor on file when working with design because you need editor on file to be able to utilize plugins. So click it open. And here we go. So now we're in the Figma file. And we can take a look at some of the examples here. We have dashboards, some cards. Um, let's look at forms. Some various types of settings pages. And all kinds of various components. So that's interesting. Let's go over the cards and let's convert this one here. The account creation one. Oh, let me click back open to it. I'll right click, plugins, and then I'll click design. Since I already have design installed, it's showing up on my recents. But if you don't, you can click manage plugins and then search for design here. We'll open it up. And it's already recognized me because I have entered my token once. So it remembers who I am. If you haven't done that yet, you can head back over to our dashboard, click on settings, and you'll be able to get your Figma token there. Now, let's go over what the plugin is showing us. It's giving us the selected node's name, so it's a card. There's a total of 37 nodes under this component. So that means there's about 37 elements that'll be converted to bubble, saving you all the time it would take for you to do that. 91% of them use auto layout, which is great. That means that uh, it will convert effectively over to the flex layout settings in bubble. And about 89% of them have responsive height width. So also a really good metric to show that it will convert well and it will be responsive. What, we, what you don't want to see is a, a very low responsive height width uh, percentage, like 20, 30%, where you have uh, a lot of nodes, right? If you only have like four or five nodes, then a low responsive might make sense, like especially if it's an icon holder and the icon needs to be a fixed size. But if it's a larger component, then you definitely want to make sure that it has a high responsive setting, especially uh, as well as for auto layout. So let's switch over to input and I'll mark this as an input. We'll click this one as well and I'll mark this as an input as well. And I'm doing this because Figma doesn't have a native indicator of what is an input, what is a button, what is a drop down, right? It's just groups or frames and text fields. And we want to actually convert these to uh, input elements or button elements of bubble. So that's what we're doing. And I'll click on this button and I'll mark that as a button as well. And it remembers them. So if I click back into them, it remains them in as input. So you only have to do this once if you're working in the same file and you want to reconvert the same asset, it will remember. So now that we're done there, I would also like to convert these to buttons. However, but, uh, Bubble doesn't allow us to have custom icons in button elements. So unfortunately, these will just have to be groups. We'll click over to card and we'll click convert to Bubble. There we go, it says it's done. We'll head over to a uh, test editor we have. And I have the design extension pinned. But if you don't have that, you can open up your extensions and click design. Now, the first time you pull it up it's, or in a new tab, it might take you a second or two for the extension to load up. Uh, so please make sure to give it a second because if you click it and then it doesn't do anything, you click it again, it closes out. So we'll open it back up and we see that the card's here. I haven't used it yet. Click copy, click paste. There we go, it's on our screen. And the first thing, obviously, is it's taking up the full width of the page, right? And let's see why it's doing that. If we go back over to card, we can see that horizontal resizing is set to fill. So this card is going to stretch and fill the entire width of its parent container. And that's just what it was set to, so that's how it's going to get converted to bubble. So we just need to make a couple of modifications. We'll come back here, and we'll set max width to be 480. It's pretty standard. Make it 320, and I'll center it on the page. And then if I click on input, I can see that this is an input. There we go. Great. This is also an input. We'll make this a password. Set the placeholder, a couple of asterisks, and let's see if this is a button. There we go. That's a button as well. So now let's see how it looks when we run it. Great. Here we go. So we have the card. 
I have an email input field, I have a password input field, and I have a button. All of that done in uh, probably less than two minutes of actually going into the Figma file, but you could do it obviously much faster if you're not talking through it. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me at hello at design.io. Take care.